Something strange is happening beneath America's western edge. For the past month alone, over 4,200 earthquakes have rattled the continental United States, from tiny tremors under Nevada deserts to sharp jolts in Oklahoma's fracking zones. Yet, amid this nationwide rumble, the West Coast, the very heart of seismic legend, remains hauntingly quiet. The San Andreas, the Cascadia subduction zone, the Hayward Fault, all sleeping, or pretending to. How long can a fault system that slices through the edge of the Pacific Plate remain silent while the rest of the country shakes? How much pressure can build before the silence itself becomes the loudest warning of all? On September 26, 2025, a magnitude 5.9 quake struck roughly 231 kilometers west of Bandon, Oregon deep in the cold Pacific waters at a depth of 10 kilometers. Barely 24 hours later, another tremor, magnitude 5.1, shook almost the same coordinates. Two medium-sized offshore earthquakes west of the Cascadia subduction zone seemed unremarkable at first glance. But for geologists, these were not ordinary coincidences, they were tremors whispering through one of the most dangerous seismic systems on Earth. Because between those offshore ruptures and the vast silence stretching inland lies a tectonic tension that's been building for centuries, a pressure cooker known as the Cascadia Megathrust. It is capable of unleashing a magnitude 9 quake, shaking the ground from Northern California to British Columbia and sending tsunamis racing across the Pacific. So why is USGS, the United States Geological Survey, now flashing what they call a red alert across multiple monitoring stations? Why are stress meters rising even as surface seismographs show deceptive calm? To understand what's happening, we need to trace the unseen chain of motion beneath the crust, the slow grinding of the Pacific Plate, which moves roughly four to five centimetres, around two inches, every year, colliding and scraping beneath the North American Plate. Over time, this relentless movement locks the fault lines, storing massive amounts of elastic energy. The longer the lock holds, the greater the eventual release. That's the paradox of seismic silence. When the surface grows still, when tremors fade and faults appear quiet, that's often when the most dangerous strain is accumulating. Seismologists describe it as a seismic gap, a stretch of fault line that hasn't ruptured in far longer than the historical average. California's San Andreas Fault, for example, last produced a major rupture along its southern segment in the year 1906. In geologic time, that's not long, but in tectonic stress terms, it's an eternity. The Hayward Fault, slicing beneath the densely populated East Bay, last ruptured in 1868. It's now over a century and a half overdue by its own historical rhythm. The USGS monitoring network has quietly registered anomalous strain readings along several of these key zones. Deep borehole strain meters installed after the 2014 Napa quake are detecting subtle but consistent expansion and contraction patterns, the kind that often precede fault creep or pre-slip events. In simple terms, the crust is breathing, slowly unevenly. Yet, for the moment, no major earthquakes have followed. The Pacific Ocean, however, is not so silent. The chain of tremors west of Oregon is part of a broader pattern, a global surge of mid-sized quakes that has defined the year 2025. From Japan's Rukyu Trench to Chile's Nazca Boundary, seismic energy appears to be migrating along the planet's subduction interfaces like a wave of tension circling the globe. It's as if the Earth's plates are redistributing stress, seeking their next point of failure, and that redistribution may now be converging on the American West Coast. 
What makes this moment particularly alarming is not only the quiescence of the faults, but the context. The Pacific Plate has been exceptionally restless this year. Clusters of magnitude 5 to 6 earthquakes have been recorded along its periphery. The Aleutians, Tonga, the Kermadec Islands, the Philippines, and Alaska's southern coast. Even dormant volcanic regions like California's Long Valley Caldera and Oregon's Mount Hood have shown faint but measurable uplift in recent satellite radar scans. Something deep is stirring. But here's the catch. The West Coast faults themselves, the very fractures we expect to release that pressure, have remained tightly locked. Like overwhelmed springs. This is where the mystery deepens. Scientists from the USGS and several universities have been quietly comparing stress data from a network of GPS and INSAR, Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, satellites. What they've found suggests that large sections of the San Andreas, Cascadia and Walker Lane fault systems are under synchronized tension. In other words, they're in phase. That alignment rarely happens by chance. It usually precedes a regional rupture sequence, where multiple faults fail in quick succession or cascade one into another. In a private briefing leaked to certain research groups in late September, one USGS analyst reportedly described the situation as the calm before a continental scale reset. Of course, the agency has not made any official public warning. The term Red Alert itself refers not to an immediate quake forecast, but to a heightened internal watch status, a level of seismic vigilance activated when multiple stress indicators exceed historical thresholds. The last time this classification appeared across the West Coast monitoring grid was just before the 2010 Baja California earthquake, which triggered ripples as far north as Los Angeles. So why issue it now? Because the indicators line up too neatly to ignore. Crustal strain is rising. Groundwater pressure in several fault-adjacent aquifers, particularly around San Bernardino, San Jose and Medford, has increased by measurable degrees, often a subtle sign of compression deep underground. Even the background seismic noise, the faint vibrations the Earth constantly emits, has shifted frequency slightly, implying subtle changes in crustal tension. And perhaps most unsettling of all, the long-locked Cascadia subduction zone, stretching a thousand kilometers around 620 miles from Northern California to Vancouver Island, has begun to tremor. These are not classic earthquakes, but deep episodic tremor and slip events. Slow, silent quakes that unfold over weeks, invisible to the naked eye, but clearly captured by instruments. They typically occur when subducting slabs grind at depth, releasing small pulses of stress that sometimes act as precursors to major events. It's as if the earth itself is whispering softly, almost politely, before it roars. Still, there's no panic, no headlines screaming, the big one is coming. Because science is careful with predictions. Because earthquakes don't obey human calendars. But the silence, that unnatural, expectant silence, stretches on. The paradox of 2025 is that the rest of the planet is shaking violently, while America's most infamous seismic frontier is standing unnaturally still, like an orchestra frozen on the final note before the crash of cymbals. The question, then, isn't if the West Coast will break. The question is, which part will go first? The San Andreas, the Hayward, or the Cascadia? Or, as some now fear, all of them together, in a synchronized cascade that could change the shape of the continent's western edge? As September fades into October, 
Geologists are quietly admitting what the public suspects, that the West Coast's current calm isn't safety, it's suspense. And beneath that stillness, the countdown may already be ticking. For the past several weeks, USGS instruments have been recording patterns that don't fit conventional models. The agency's internal data feed, accessible only to research partners, shows simultaneous strain acceleration across multiple West Coast fault systems, a rare and unsettling phenomenon. Each strain meter spike is like a pulse, each GPS deviation like a heartbeat, echoing from deep within the crust. These are not random blips. They form a rhythm, one that's eerily synchronized from Northern California to Washington State. In the language of geophysics, this alignment means stress transfer. One region compresses, another stretches, like invisible hands tightening a vast continental bowstring. Eventually one segment gives way, and when it does, the energy doesn't stay confined. It migrates, triggering adjacent faults, setting off what scientists fear could become a multi-segment rupture event. That phrase, clinical as it sounds, describes a nightmare. It means several faults breaking together, a domino effect capable of shaking the entire western margin of the United States in minutes. The last time something remotely similar happened was in the year 1700, when the Cascadia subduction zone ruptured in full. Native oral histories recall it as the night the sea attacked the land. Modern science confirms it sent a tsunami all the way to Japan, where it struck the coast with no local warning, confusing scholars for centuries. Today, that same fault is once again locked tight, so tight that its deep tremors have become erratic, jittery, like the tremble of a muscle before the spasm. And still, the West Coast remains outwardly calm. If you stand today on the quiet beaches of Oregon, you wouldn't feel the tension buried beneath your feet. The wind hums softly through the dunes, the waves roll in with their usual rhythm. But a few hundred kilometers below, the boundary between two massive plates is grinding silently, teeth to stone. The Pacific plate pushes northeast. The North American plate resists. Neither will yield forever. Scientists at the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network recently simulated stress progression using high-resolution 3D models of crustal geometry. Their results were unsettling. The simulation suggested that if current deformation trends continue, if the offshore strain west of Bandon continues to rise, a full Cascadia rupture could be initiated by a moderate earthquake in the outer forearc, exactly where the magnitude 5.9 and magnitude 5.1 quakes struck in late September. In other words, those quakes may not have released pressure. They may have transferred it inland. The USGS Red Alert classification, rarely triggered outside of volcanic crises, is essentially an internal flag indicating that multiple stress variables are simultaneously outside normal range. These include crustal strain rate, hydrologic pressure changes, and deep tremor frequency. When all three exceed certain thresholds, a red level advisory activates automatically within the agency's internal monitoring network. And in early October, it did. A quiet chain reaction of alerts swept through regional stations, San Francisco, Eureka, Portland, Seattle, each registering abnormal stress synchronization. It doesn't mean a quake is guaranteed, but it means conditions are ripe. The mystery, however, runs deeper, because the pattern emerging now doesn't just involve the Cascadia subduction zone. It extends south into the San Andreas Fault, eastward into the Walker Lane Shear Zone near Reno, and even to the lesser-known Garlock Fault that cuts through the Mojave Desert. These are separate systems, 
or at least they were. But satellite readings now show faint evidence of shared deformation trends. It's as if the crust itself, from Baja, California to Vancouver Island, is shifting as a single massive unit, bending under invisible weight. Some researchers quietly call it the Western Arc Hypothesis, the idea that the entire margin is entering a synchronized stress phase, where one rupture could cascade into others, similar to how Japan's 2011 Tohoku quake triggered tremors across the entire Pacific Rim. If that theory is correct, the West Coast may not be waiting for a big one. It may be standing at the edge of a sequence, a chain reaction that could redefine the seismic landscape of North America. Yet the silence persists. Why no major quake yet, despite so much tension? That question troubles even the veterans. One possibility is that the faults are undergoing what seismologists call aseismic slip, deep, slow motion at depth, absorbing energy without producing surface quakes. But slow slip doesn't erase all strain. It only delays it. Eventually, the locked upper crust must catch up. When it does, the release is sudden. For now, instruments suggest that these deep slips are increasing in frequency. In certain Cascadia segments, they've nearly doubled since last year. Each slow slip event releases energy equivalent to a magnitude 6 earthquake, invisible, silent, but cumulative, like tiny exhalations before the scream. In a world already rattled by record seismic activity from Turkey's twin quakes to Indonesia's volcanic swarm, the West Coast stillness has become an anomaly. Even the Global Seismic Index, compiled by international observatories, shows an odd imbalance. While the Pacific Rim roars, the western U.S. margin holds its breath. The deeper question, the one USGS scientists ask in closed-door sessions, is whether that imbalance can hold much longer. Because when pressure equalizes, and it always does, the correction tends to be sudden. It might begin offshore, near Bandon, where the September tremors crack the ocean floor, or along the quiet southern San Andreas, beneath the desert towns east of Los Angeles, or perhaps near the northern margin, where Vancouver Island's deep tremor zone shivers in intervals like a heartbeat waiting to quicken. Each possibility carries a different timeline, but the same ending. A rupture, a reset. A long, dark roar as the locked edge of a continent finally exhales. And when it comes, it will not wait for warning. Because the truth, uncomfortable yet undeniable, is that earthquakes don't announce themselves. They build stories in silence, stories told only in data, in stress readings, in whispers beneath our feet. And maybe that's what this Red alert really means not panic, not prophecy, but acknowledgement that the clock beneath America's west coast is still ticking, its gears tightening, waiting for the smallest push to set it in motion. The question isn't whether the big one is overdue. The question is whether we are listening closely enough to know when the silence turns into signal. So the next time you stand on California's cliffs or the Oregon coast or the streets of San Francisco, take a breath and listen. The earth beneath you isn't still. It's waiting. And when it moves again, the world will remember this quiet, the calm, before history shifts once more. If you found this story chilling, revealing, or thought-provoking, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and tap that hype icon to help this video reach more curious minds. Because the earth is speaking in tremors and data and somewhere beneath the silence of the west coast, the next chapter is already being written.